Hello and welcome to a video where we're going to explore our top six performance upgrades that you can do to your R9T. Now, this is a refresher course for a blog that we've done many, many years ago where we did explore this. However, since then, the parts have changed. A few of them have become obsolete and there's also some better things on the market. So, in no particular order, I'm gonna go through some of those modifications that we have done to our beautiful Midnight Racer that sat behind me here. So starting off with the breathability of the engine, especially on the intake side. So a DNA filter is a perfect upgrade to not only an airbox removal kit, but also a standard airbox. DNA do a OEM replacement that can go straight in. If you check out the listing on our YouTube channel, you'll see that we do a tank lift or a tank removal video. Check that out and that will show you how to get to where the air filter is. Now, DNA filters increase the airflow by double. Twice the amount more air can flow through that filter than the paper filter that is supplied on your bike from the factory. It is a no-brainer modification. And not only is it an increase in airflow, it is an increase in quality. These filters are lifetime usability. So once you have them, you don't need to throw them away every time you service the bike within the interval that the air filter needs changing, you can wash the filter, give it a clean, and then re-oil it. So not only are you doing an awesome modification to your bike, you're also helping out the environment, and we are all for that. Number two on the list is exhaust headers. Keeping on the theme of engine breathability, we've dealt with intake, now let's deal with exhaust. One of the best way to get horsepower out of your engine is to increase the gas flow across the cylinder and having full, full flow exhaust headers will do that. So a good example is these unit garage headers that we've got here fitted to our beautiful Midnight Racer. I can't give you any horsepower specs on these, but I can give you some weight specs. For example, the stainless steel version of these headers are two kilos lighter than the standard headers with the catalytic converter in it. If you fancy being really exotic and want to go for the titanium version, not only do they go a beautiful blue, they are three kilos lighter than the standard headers. The Acropovic on our website as well, there's a full range on there, but I can give you some horsepower uh, uh, figures with the Acropovic. Five horsepower increase and five Newton meters of torque on the stainless steel and the tie version. So that'll give you a good idea as to how much you're gonna notice through throttle response, as well as through the seat of your pants, because you can never put a price on how much you're gonna notice that on the road. It is a no-brainer for us, and it is an absolute no-brainer for you. Number three, the Rapid Bike Evo, your perfect modification for all the early R9Ts. So that is the Gen 1 and the Gen 2s. It is our go-to modification. We love it. It's what we recommend with all of our airbox removals. It is an adaptive system. It's not a booster plug, it is an adaptive system. So the more you ride it, the more it will learn and the better it will get. You will notice all of the change through the throttle response and it will pretty much give you the feeling, if you ever have ridden a water-cooled boxer engine, it will give you that feeling that a water-cooled boxer engine gives for response, rev range, increased torque, it is an absolute no-brainer for us and you will love it. Number four on the list, the Wilbur Shock. We've done plenty to do with engine and fueling. We're now gonna start to move our modifications towards the chassis. It's unanimous across the BMW community that the rear shock absorber from the factory isn't very good. So step in Wilbur's, they are unanimous again across the BMW community that they are the modification, modification to go for. These shocks are built inside out for you. That is correct, built inside out and weighted for your specific weight and spring range and how often you use it with or without a pillion. We've tested these shocks extensively on tarmac track with all of our customers and off-road. You only need to check out our Google reviews where you can see that some customers have actually kept their R9T purely off the back of fitting a Wilbur's shock. It's our number one upgrade and we would recommend going for it without a shadow of a doubt. If it's the first 500 pounds you wanna spend on your bike, go for it. Please check out the website. There's a whole range of Wilbur's products on there. If you don't see something that you've heard about that you want, please just fire us over an email and we will sort you out, no problem at all. Number five on the list and a rather exotic one is 
carbon wheels. Now you'll see that they're missing from our Midnight Racer. We think that they definitely need to be added. However, you can see there's a beautiful example behind us. Now, this is a little bit of an exotic choice. However, it is an important one because it takes into account the unsprung weight of the bike. Now this is something that you cannot adjust via suspension because it is unsprung. So if you can start to reduce the central fugal weight of all of the products on the bike, you will notice that the bike will handle lighter. Now when you, you might be a bit inquisitive and think, well, what do you mean it will handle lighter? Purely at any given speed, the higher your speed goes, the increase in the weight of the centrifugal force of the wheels going around. So effectively, the faster you go, the harder it is to turn the bike because you have a lot more weight rotating as unsprung weight. With these carbon wheels being more than half the weight of standard wheels, that is something that you will notice a significant change when you're on the bike regards the feedback, how quick it turns, and how it wants to just ride the corner. Now, this is a modification both for road and track because like I said, with the wheels being half the weight, you'll notice that very, very quickly at any speeds above 50 mile an hour when the centrifugal force really starts to kick in. It's an exotic one, and if you can afford it, it is not only a really good performance mod, they look bloody gorgeous as well, so recommend it. So last on our list and still ticking the chassis box is brakes. We've dealt with how you can go faster or how you can get more performance out of the bike, but it's also vitally important to tell you how you can stop quicker. So behind me, you'll see a set of Galford cindered pads. Now, if you go on our website, you'll see there is a few choices. Now we've tested these pads on and off track. It is vital that you make sure you choose your pad to the riding that you are doing. Now, we all like to kid ourselves and think that we are faster than we actually are. However, be mindful of the fact that pads need to run at an operating temperature. Race pads have a very, very high operating temperature and below that operating temperature, they don't perform very, very well because they are designed to be in the higher echelons of the operating temperature, so they are compounded for that reason. So make sure you get some road pads or fast road pads according to the riding that you are doing because you are stopping at traffic lights, you are sitting in traffic, those pads are gonna get cold and you wanna make sure that they have the correct bite from the correct temperature. Now, although we can't give you any data or stopping distances on this, what we can tell you is from our experience on track with poor pads and on track with good pads is you're gonna notice a difference at the handlebars and that means through the lever. You're gonna notice a lot more feedback and a lot a lot harder lever and lever that is a lot stable at high temperatures both on track off track and basically pretty much in general road riding so get yourself a set of those however make sure you choose the right pad for you so that concludes our top six performance upgrades for your R90. We hope that you've enjoyed that. We've tried our very, very best to declutter everything that you might read on forums, or on the website, or even that you might have heard down the cafe from the world's fastest R90 racer. It's all here fitted to our Midnight Racer and it's all on our website, peercitycustom.com. Anything you see on there that either you're not sure about or anything that you see in this video that you want a little bit more detail on, please fire that in the comments below and we will do our very, very best to answer it. Alternatively, do another video exploring something that you may see that you want a little bit more on. Hope that's helped. Cheers.